Hi, everyone. Again, we are here with the amazing Sydney Strader, Head of Customer Success from Catalyst. How are you, Sydney? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? Fine, fine. So Sydney will talk on how to effectively align with your product team. The ability to establish and sustain product market fit is at the core of accelerating a business's growth. To do this, customer success plays a critical role in being the conduit to connecting product management with customers to ensure ongoing alignment. In this session by PLG Disrupt, Sydney Strader, Head of Customer Success at Catalyst, will focus on how placing customer success at the center of your organization optimizes for product management to keep a realistic perspective and consistent pulse on your customers. With the right visibility, rest assured your product team has the potential to build a highly viable product that will in turn drive customer retention and growth. Sydney, you're ready to present. The floor is yours. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much and uh, appreciate the opportunity. It's a wild time. Hope for runs keeping well uh, during these COVID days. Super excited, uh, as I mentioned, to kick us off and chat a little bit about bringing customer success and product teams together. So uh, as mentioned, I'm in a very fortunate position to be leading customer success at Catalyst. I uh, previously led customer success at Envision, have joined the Catalyst team uh, literally six weeks ago. It feels uh, feels a lot longer, learned a lot, um, getting up to speed uh, with the amazing team there and uh, super excited to share in those first six weeks some of the experiences I've had on this topic specifically around uniting customer success and product teams together. So just a little high level overview of some of the key areas we're going to double down on today. Uh, first is talking about vision and reality, uh, sometimes not quite the same. Um, two uh, pains that are often incurred today for both respective teams, why this is happening, how to address this and outcomes you'll drive as a result. So let's first chat a little bit about vision and reality. Uh, I think this probably resonates with all. I, Ultimate vision, super happy customer, super happy customer success team, super happy product team. Everyone is in lockstep, everyone's in sync, communication, effective, uh, everyone very, very happy campers. But sadly, this is often the reality. Uh, in fact, in my 10-year career in customer success, uh, it would be safe to say that this is consistent in terms of what happens, and it takes a lot of time, effort, and attention and focus to be able to uh, turn it around into those happy faces. So you often have customers who are frustrated, um, perhaps miss set expectations, don't feel the, the product may be uh, as easy or intuitive to use. Uh, you've got a customer success team who's kind of like the, the middle person trying to make the customer happy, trying to relay information back to the product team to help the customer be happy, uh, trying to be a great team player. And then you've got the product team who is absolutely swamped and overwhelmed with 5 million asks, has the guilt associated with having to say no, uh, and the challenge of seeing kind of like their hard work and efforts come to fruition and feeling the positive effects that uh, they hope to be able to drive with uh, customers on the other end. So with that kind of vision and reality, if you jump into the kind of the reality and why these pains are incurring today, you've got this customer who's like, I thought I said this feature was coming. Uh, the CS team is like, whoa, this black box, you know, we're relaying these features to our product team, uh, but we don't quite understand where they went. Uh, helps. Uh, it's challenging for us to be able to understand uh, how to effectively set expectations with our customers. And as I mentioned, Super overwhelmed product team, fielding requests, have to say no, it's part of their job, but feel the guilt associated with doing that. So if we dig into some of the reasons that we unpack like, why this is happening at its core, uh, oftentimes there's a lack of shared purpose and desired outcomes. Well, at a high level, I think everyone conceptually understands that in your role in customer success, you're responsible for helping customers be happy and healthy, adopting the product and getting the value that it's intended to deliver. And on the product team, you definitely understand that your end goal is to help a customer get value from the product that they're using and be overall happy and satisfied with the experience that they have using that product. But oftentimes those shared outcomes are not actually a discussion that these CS and product teams are having collectively. Uh, and not having that kind of rooted foundation uh, often uh, introduces some challenges. 
there's also the lacking empathy. It's so interesting. We've got a, a rock star on our team. Her name's Sue. And uh, Sue has been in customer success for all of her career, but recently uh, transitioned to our product team at Catalyst. And it's been amazing in her first you know, two weeks to hear you know, a different perspective of what it's like now that she's truly in the shoes of someone in product. Uh, and I'll speak to some of the, you know, kind of the key insights that she's been able to extract from me there. But essentially a lacking empathy because you're truly not necessarily seeing their day to day and um, putting yourself in their position in terms of the challenges that they face. Uh, lacking process, if there isn't any standardization and it's a wild, wild west, a lot of frustrations can uh, certainly erupt as a result of that. Uh, lacking communication uh, often stems from, if you don't have a, a good process, uh, communication can become even more challenging and difficult. And uh, how people communicate is very different. Uh, I'll speak to some examples of that in terms of, you know, looking at a persona of someone who's a customer success manager uh, and that of a product manager, how they communicate, how they uh, project information, receive information can be very different. And unless you understand different folks' communication styles, there can be constant friction there. Uh, and then lack of accountability. We don't have a purpose and a shared outcome, uh, and we don't have an understanding of the processes we're trying to follow and how to effectively communicate with one another. Accountability can kind of go by the wayside, and that drives a lot of uh, frustration amongst the teams as well. So put together a little bit of a, a breakdown of how to uh, address this and where I've seen success in being able to do this. And uh, Cliff and I have been really good uh, guinea pigs. Cliff is our amazing head of product at Catalyst, absolute stand-up guy, thoroughly enjoy uh, working with him. But we both acknowledge, you know, in the first you know, couple of weeks of me joining that there's a really good opportunity for us to strengthen and unite the bond between our teams and, and all doing it with the intended outcome of improving uh, the overall experience for our customers. So as a step one for everyone, I'd strongly recommend that you start with like laying the foundation at a, a leadership level. Um, because if the leaders are not aligned and on the same page in terms of the outcomes that they're trying to drive and the experience you're looking to deliver your customers, then rest assured it's going to be very, very difficult to unite your teams and get everyone on board as well. So this is a little bit of a framework that I absolutely um, have leaned on and love to use. And it starts kind of way out there and then like dialing it back to the action that you can take today. So step one um, down here being, you know, what do you want to be remembered for by your customers? When we threw that out um, to our teams, and you know, just even before that, when Cliff and I were talking directly, like we want our customers to think of our team as the absolute best experience that they've ever had working with a SaaS product. Uh, they want it to be easy, simple, reliable. Uh, we want to be remembered as the team that customers look at as the example that they try and replicate in their organization. And from defining that vision, you know, then we have to ask ourselves, well, how are we showing up? relative to that vision today? And where are we falling short? And why specifically are we falling short in those areas? And how can we improve uh, to meet our shared vision? And a lot of it goes back to, you know, the lacking empathy, lacking shared purpose, lack of communication, we may be working on the accountability piece. Um, so very common uh, trends that are associated with why that those gaps exist. So once Cliff and I had this amazing conversation, we got alignment ourselves, we knew what it was that we ultimately wanted uh, to drive amongst our teams, then we brought in the crew. Uh, and this piece is absolutely critical. On the left here, you have all these amazing faces of the Catalyst product and customer success teams. Um, because if it's purely a top-down driven initiative in which we're kind of like mandating everyone get, get on board, uh, it doesn't become adopted. It doesn't become something that they help to build. And what we knew is that there's friction on both sides, understandably, uh, of our two teams. And so we needed to create a, a safe space to be able to do that. So um, a couple kind of guidelines and lessons learned, I would say, uh, that I've thrown out here is one, like, set the stage proactively. Uh, we recommend, like, 48 hours um, before the call. Like, help everyone understand specifically, like, why we're doing this and, and what it is that we're trying to drive. We're ultimately trying to drive uh, a better experience for our customers, but we also want it to be a great, fun, cultural working environment for all of us. Uh, and when you know that you've got partners in crime, you know that everyone's on the same page, when you know you can effectively communicate and recognize people for for job well done but also you know be constructive where there's areas for improvement and that opinion is respected um, you can achieve a lot and it's a very fulfilling team to be a part of and that's something that we're striving for so making sure that we were able to effectively set those expectations um, for the team and also you know kind of 
help them understand in their own words why why we're here today, right? Uh, Cliff and I both independently spoke to our respective teams and said, you know, here are some of the pain points that we're hearing, right? Transparency on the roadmap, accountability in terms of timelines on the product side. You know, there was frustration in terms of, well, what is it that you know, customer success is doing to help drive uh, adoption of new features? You know, we put so much time, effort, and detail into building these things. What the heck are we doing to get them adopted? Uh, and that being a point of friction. So just really driving that empathy that we're hearing you, we're listening to you, but we need to we need to drive forward action um, that's going to help to correspond. Here. And then the second step is like repeat the same model uh, that I shared uh, in this slide here, which is like bringing the collective teams together, proposing these questions in advance so they have some time to think about it. But starting off at like, you know, at a foundational level, what do we want to be remembered for? Um, and then freeing up the dialogue to focus on these respective areas of where are we today? Where are we falling short? Why are we falling short? And what action can we all take uh, accountability for moving forward? And uh, then big, big takeaway is just like, make sure that you recap and it's actionable. So often, you know, if, if we take the first step of having this conversation, it may like just fall by the wayside, everyone goes back to their natural habitat and, and no actions taken. So making sure at the conclusion of that discussion, um, that that dialogue is captured in a note, uh, that there's clear takeaways in terms of what's to happen next and when, um, so that everyone feels like there's not just progress in the therapy of the discussion, but actually uh, driving forward activities associated with helping to improve. Um, and then once that's defined, you know, it really comes down to action and accountability. So these are some some pieces that I think were really stand out to us in terms of Cliff and I asking ourselves of, okay, what what next? Um, what we heard, as I mentioned, as one of the examples, product you know raising that there was there's this lack of like shared ownership around driving feature adoption. Uh, so how can we introduce some shared KPIs that we all have mutual kind of buy into that we're consistently evaluating our performance against um, and driving that focus and discipline amongst our team? The second is recognition. At uh, Catalyst, we use a tool called Lattice, um, and it's a way for us to be able to recognize peer-to-peer, -peer, leader to, uh, to ICs on the team, uh, et cetera. And it's a great way to just reinforce those positive behaviors that you wanted to see. So a really good example uh, that happened today following our conversation was like, you know, we had a couple PMs that were just like very candid about their experience in this discussion in terms of where there was room for improvement, as well as the customer success team. And the fact that people are being open and direct in terms of like, here's what I would have liked to have seen. This is how I think we could do differently um, is a great way to, to just reinforce that recognition of those behaviors, sharing that perspective so that we continue to get better together. Um, incorporating expectations of how these two teams show up in their performance reviews and making sure that it, it's formalized, it's a shared expectation, it's consistently being evaluated and feedback in, given in the moment relative to that and captured more thematically as part of their performance review. Um, another great way to drive partnership is uh, inclusivity in the context of like bring PMs into your hiring process for customer success and vice versa uh, on the uh, product side. So most recently we were uh, going through a very exciting recruiting process for a new CSM for Catalyst. Incredibly excited to have Diana on board. Uh, and Tyler, one of our product managers, was actually part of our interview um, panelists. And we really tasked Tyler with like evaluating the candidacy of these candidates in the context of being an amazing partner to product. Uh, and also with the bigger kind of lens of how does this individual partner with marketing and how does this individual partner with sales and other functions of the organization. And so bringing Tyler in to be a part of the process of that evaluation very much continues to tighten um, that bond between CS and product. So looking for opportunities to bring one another uh, into each other's world goes a long way. And uh, the last one, number five here, I think I was, gosh, two, three days into uh, into to Catalyst and um, Cliff's like, Sid, I know you're just getting settled, but one thing I'd love to chat about is like, how do we align some sort of like compensation component between our two respective teams? And I was like, wow, what a, a breath of fresh air, uh, Cliff. It was incredibly exciting to see that he wanted to have these, not just shared KPIs, but is there an opportunity for us to actually go further than that? When we think of like human behaviors and what drives actions and activities, I've seen, you know, over time in my career, just how powerful a compensation structure can be when it effectively corresponds to the activities and actions you're looking to drive. So uh, not something we've implemented yet, but something that is very active uh, in our conversations and would encourage everyone to think about that as well. 
So uh, as I mentioned, six week in Catalyst here, and uh, this is uh, something that we are, it's a work in progress, um, but a couple key takeaways and learnings uh, that I can certainly share from, from us putting uh, this into motion. One, um, make this a one agenda meeting. Uh, Cliff and I will take full accountability that we merge this conversation as part of a separate discussion that was also focusing on our Q4 roadmap and the context shifting and the lack of focus to like, let's just bring our teams together with one united purpose fell short. Um, so if we could do it all over again and pass our learnings on to all of you, the recommendation would we be make it a priority, make it the sole focus, and don't dilute it as part of other product CS related discussions. Um, the second one, which I thought was an amazing shout out from, from Cliff, is like when we looked at how the two teams communicated and engaged with one another uh, in the actual discussion and dialogue, and then the feedback that we got from the two respective teams after, basically Cliff summarized it well. He's like, we've got artists and we've got scientists. And the artists were like the customer success team. They were ready to have a dialogue, just like kind of shoot the shoot, if you will, not necessarily super. Um, programmatic in terms of how we approach the discussion, but on the product side, they want it very formalized. They wanted to have like a specific question that was poised, everyone talked to it, open dialogue on the screen, sharing your notes so everyone could see it firsthand. So there was very much a different dynamic um, to the communication styles of the two teams, which was so interesting to see it so clearly in that moment, but often gets diluted if you're thinking one-to-one -one communication. So I think that that was a great way to quite frankly, build empathy and truly understand why there is so often friction in this process because of those um, different communication styles, not one necessarily right or wrong, but different and needing to understand how people effectively uh, communicate um, based on their own styles. Um, I think another big takeaway was like reinforced share ownership in taking action. Um, one area that, you know, we have some, some development work to do is like, this isn't solely a sit and cliff problem to to fix this is a collective team problem and if there is you know some frustration on, on the product side in relation to you know hey are our features getting adopted or is there as much accountability on the customer success side side to drive that adoption that no one fears on the product side to bring up those kpis and say you know Let's let's all align on these. Let's bring them up on our weekly CS and product call and you know check in and see how we're doing relative to those and how we could be improving. So just making sure that everyone knows it's within their control to take action. It's strongly encouraged. And that if everyone you know has a mutual ownership of this uh, and it's not just waiting for the next person to pick it up and run with it, we'll get a lot further faster in, in tightening that bond. Um, feedback was huge. I mean, now when we're going to build on, on the first conversation to the next conversation, there's lots of things we know that we can do differently. As I mentioned, like a one agenda meeting, this is the sole focus uh, of the dialogue and conversation, reapproaching it with more structure than the initial structure uh, that we proposed. And I think, you know, having that feedback and consistently iterating it on shows that there, there's progress. Um, the last bullet is like, be patient. Um, this friction didn't evolve overnight and it's not going to be solved in a meeting. So uh, as much as you want to have this like amazing breakthrough meeting and everyone's besties after it and everyone's off to the races in terms of how they can be better partners to one another, it does take time. It's a change in behavior. It's a change in motion. Uh, and that's why that recognition piece that I mentioned is so critical so that people see that as they are actioning what we said we needed to do to improve, it's being recognized, reinforced, and ultimately becomes the stronger muscle of the muscle memory versus how tr things are traditionally uh, done today. So uh, these are really the outcomes uh, that I think you know everyone keep keep an eye on and what you're ultimately trying to drive for. But that shared purpose and desired outcomes, uh, empathy for one another and their roles, um, process to drive repeatability. Uh, you know we're all aspiring to be scaling organizations, and, and the more people you bring on, if you don't solve this at the core, uh, rest assured it only gets further out of hand from there. So definitely making sure that that that's in place. Uh, effective channels of communication and mutually held accountability all levels. Again, not a sit and cliff thing. Um, everyone can hold one another peer to peer responsible for the areas that we have uh, walked away with saying that we're looking to improve. 
So with all of those outcomes, uh, all of those, those actions, the outcomes you'll drive are trust. Uh, if you have an incredibly united customer, uh, sorry, customer success team and product team, rest assured that the customer feels like they're very much being heard, listened to, have transparency into, et cetera. Uh, a great example of, I would say, improvement for Catalyst after this dialogue was getting context as to why we deliberately chose only to have two beta customers in a particular beta that we have for a new feature coming out. Um, there was such great context around platform reliability and ensuring that it was more, um, it was a very proactive, you know, conversation that they had and assessment that they did. And also, you know, making sure that it didn't compromise any other customers um, overall performance of the product and the fact that they did that proactively, they did it intentionally, they gave us the context behind that, allowed us to go back to other customers to help them understand why we were so intentional about that, that two limit beta. Um, overall, better customer experience is going to lead to retention and growth, particularly when you nail the muscle of like, what are the pains that customers are experiencing, product helping solve those pains, and customer success going back to effectively prescribe the solution based on the pain that was originally articulated. Um, advocacy goes an exceptionally long way when you've got super happy customers. Um, you know, we've got Scott at Bray's, uh, an incredible customer of ours. He is just consistently preaching the good word about his experience uh, using Catalyst, and we are so appreciative of that. But we had to earn um, Scott Scott's advocacy, and we have to continue to, to earn and sustain that. Um, it's incredibly impactful to, to any business, and it's something that has to be uh, upheld. Um, so it's super important there. Uh, employee satisfaction. As I mentioned, like I show up for a job because I want to have fun. Uh, I want to laugh. I want to enjoy myself. I want to learn from the others around me. Um, and also like when you go through these rocky waters, as we've all encountered over the last seven, eight months, a pandemic hits, like it builds up employee resilience. If you have an incredibly tight, united team, no matter what curveball you get, everyone remains in lockstep, effective communication, the processes don't break down, and you're able to be resilient through some of the toughest times, which I know we're all experiencing right now. So as a friendly recap, takes time. This is someone I'm not a very patient person. so. I have to work on my patience, be patient, be consistent, and ultimately you will drive the outcome of a super happy customer, a very happy customer success team, very happy product team, and collectively you will drive that product market fit, overall customer satisfaction, and significant advocacy uh, in the space. Okay. Thank you so much, Sydney, for your insightful presentation. I couldn't agree more with all of your points. You mentioned some, some important insights here. So I have two questions for you. Uh, the first is, can you refer to the main KPIs you use to align with product management? Yes, I can. So this is a work in progress, full transparency. But um, I touched on one of them in terms of the uh, product adoption. So that's something that we want to absolutely nail that when we launch a feature, we are consistently measuring and have a target level of adoption of users using the product. Um, in addition, NPS is something that we're using today to, to gauge satisfaction um, throughout the customer's life cycle. And very often what we see is that the NPS results are directly correlated to to product and the experience. Um, mm -hmm. If it's compromised, if it's reliable, if it's not. So that's something that we have uh, a shared um, KPI around as well. Very much mm -hmm. in its infancy, we have a lot that we're uh, working through, but um, net dollar retention being another one uh, that we have shared outcomes. Ultimately, if if product's doing their job well and CS is helping drive the adoption uh, and buy-in and value realized from those features and functionality, it will drive retention. It will drive further growth and expansion. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are the, the core KPIs that we have today. But. Mm, definitely. Okay. So the second question is that you mentioned ways to sync with product management effectively. Can you share some learnings on how to align also with product management, engineering, and product design, and in general with anyone that's associated with product delivery? Yeah, that is such a good question. So yeah. um, whenever I approached this with, with Cliff and was like, hey, Cliff, you know, how do you feel about uh, bringing our teams together and having this little chit chat? Um, I was originally like, look, I, I think holistically, we've got to bring in design, we've got to bring in engineering, like all of us have to be bought in to what mm. we're attempting to co deliver to our customers, because, you know, you can't do it with just CS, you can't do it with just product, you can't do it with just, you know, product and engineering, like, it, exactly. It, it's a, it takes a team. But mm. Cliff had a really interesting insight, which I appreciated, which is, 
in many organizations, in our organization as well, engineering is so far removed in many ways from working with customer success directly. Now that's an area for improvement, but product and, and customer success are, are day to day. So if we start hmm. with product, who is kind of like the middle ground between like customer for CSM and CSM to product, if we bring in product, they're kind of the conduit between customer success and engineering and design. So if we start with bonding the CS and product teams, then we can fold in engineering and show what we've been able to achieve as a result of that like early stage of that foundation. Um, and we have all the confidence in the world, like our engineering team will be incredibly, you know, on board and excited to, uh, to jump in. We've got great relationships with them, but I think it's more about sharing that unity in what are we trying to achieve? What are we upholding mm -hmm. ourselves to and how do we establish those processes and also the communication uh, effectively with one another so we can share that recognition when things are, are going well with specificity and also that constructiveness when we've got some room for improvement. I think that is a, a wise approach. I have one last question that arises just right now. Uh, sure. What process or framework do you have for CS team members to create insights for the product team to review? How do you make sure the insights are not too small and create noise for other team members versus have waited too long and it's a bigger problem to solve? Great question. Start with product solving with what they need. So it's the same mm. thing within like the customer success and sales handoff. We built the deck of all the information we wanted to articulate to CSMs and we needed sales to be, put together the process to give us all the information. It's the same thing. Solve for the audience, yeah. which is product. You build me the framework in terms of the information that you want so that it absolutely reduces the amount of like back and forth, confusion, thoughts, prioritization that you have. Build me that framework and I can guarantee I'll get you the information mm. you need. Um, but mm. it's when you assume you know what product needs to be effective that things can go off the rails in CS. So yeah, yeah, I always yeah, yeah. have end audience solve for the framework and delivering audience being the one to provide all of the inputs to effectively meet the templated criteria. Well constructed. Okay, thank you so much, Sydney. My pleasure. It was an amazing session with you. Your speech was amazing. Your answers were so insightful. Uh, let's stay connected, okay? Maybe for a future PLG Disrupt. And Love again, that. thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Take care. <laughs> you too. Okay, so stay with us because we'll hop into the next session in just a few minutes. We have a very special guest from Calendly. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.